hello guys welcome back to the channel good morning good afternoon good evening to every single one of you i hope you're having a great day guys and uh as you would know uh, our nigerian super falcons you know have now uh started shaping into uh, a team that's actually uh, serious for this game and uh the report right now is that you know there's been uh, several more arrivals to the camp and now they've now totaled uh around 20 players you know uh like this list that yeah, you can see here on the screen included a few uh, names that you know obviously came into the camp recently and of course uh, there's still uh, a number of uh, uh, players three of them who are yet to show up one of them uh, being a sister to show uh who we said or uh, whom uh, you know i stated in the last video was going to come on thursday but again it's so exciting it's so uh you know good to see that this team now is now a, a full team and of course uh, the training is now making more sense and speaking about training they actually had their second training of uh of the campaign uh today morning and it was uh it was really good uh coach wardrobe obviously really uh was uh, impressed he was happy you know with the turn up of the team and of course they had a uh, some really uh nice uh trainings you know in terms of experimenting on how they were going on how they are going to play uh, the game this friday but leaving up there guys let me let you know of another uh, good news uh, of course which is uh regarding the, the gist about right to say somewhere if you recall in the last video i talked about right to say, say somewhere uh, uh you know being uh pending or his case being pending with the Turkish FA as to whether they are going to give him 10 match ban for uh, fighting uh, a, a, a fan. But the great news right now is that he's now been uh, declared free from guilt. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's he's now been ruled that, you know, the act that he did was uh, as a result of self-defense. Self so right now he is not going to serve any... Um, any uh, punishment whatsoever but the entire team uh, which is Fenerbahce uh, they are now told that they will play that they will play uh, six games indoors uh, you know uh, for that one uh, at least the next six games no fans no ticket sales nothing like that that's the punishment that the Turkish FA have have now reached uh, regarding Brazil Samuel but he's not going to be punished fine or banned whatsoever that's the news right now let me let you know the other updates guys there's a number of things i wanted to uh, share uh, share in this video and one of the most pressing things is the fact that uh you know uh the saga that actually happened between coach finidi and of course uh omar sadik i know uh you know if you follow this channel you do know that we've obviously talked about it before how coach finidi didn't really uh, uh, you know, a rub off or, or didn't really um, uh, associate very well with some of these players. He, in fact, uh, had issues with some of these players after the two international friendlies that we played against Ghana and then Mali. And one of the players that had uh, the biggest issues with Coach uh, Finidi uh, is Omar Sadiq, or was Omar Sadiq, you know, as at that time that they played the Mali game. And of course, I talked about it on this channel, how, um, you know, Omar Sadiq didn't even as much as shake the, the coach, uh, Mr. Finidi, after the, whole, uh, the game. And of course, uh, the other players were also angry, but they didn't express it in that manner. Uh, so but what's happening right now is actually, uh, uh, you know, an exclusive uh, that was published by Scorn Nigeria editors. Of course, you know that Score Nigeria is, uh, is one of the uh, most reliable websites when it comes to covering Nigerian uh, super egos and, of course, NFF. So this was actually even published on the 30th of March, which is like three or four days ago. And um, the exclusive is actually, is actually uh, covering that uh, Finidi did not invite, you know, in reality, Finidi didn't invite uh, Omar Sadiq as part of the 26-man uh, squad for the two friendlies against Ghana and Mali. But, you know, in the end, uh, uh, Omar actually showed up 
you know, because we saw him and all of that, but he didn't uh, make an appearance. And now that begs the question, how exactly did Omar said they get the memo or get the message to show up in camp when in reality Finidi and uh, the, the rest of the uh, technical committee who you know selected these players did not invite him of course Finidi was made the um, interim coach he has the sole power you know to decide who's going to be in his team because of course NFF already gave him that power to be the interim manager so whoever he says is going to be in his team is going to be in his team whoever he says is not going to be it's not going to be and of course because he didn't invite Omar Sadiq perhaps that was the reason why he had such a big misunderstanding with Omar Sadiq maybe he even told him to his face that you were not invited how are you here that kind of a thing you know which is why of course you would expect Omar Sadiq to act the way that he did you know, started keeping Malik's and they didn't shake the coach or talk to the coach. But again, this goes way deep into questioning NFF's role in this. How is it possible that NFF are still, you know, acting in, in this way that you're obviously inviting someone to the team, but their name is not, you know, officially in the, in the roster, you know, of the people that were selected. I just wanted to add that here, guys because i just found out that that's probably the reason why we are having Omar Sadiq uh, issue with Coach Finidi, although not only Omar Sadiq has issue with uh, uh, Finidi. We also have a number of players, as we talked about in the last video. Rukman had a bit of a, an issue because he wasn't he, he didn't play as much as he wanted. Nathan Teller, no appearance whatsoever, despite his form and all of that. Uh, you know, we saw a number of players, of course, who didn't make any appearance. But the Umar Sadiq saga, I wanted to bring it here because, you know, it's officially, uh, you know, published by Score Nigeria, an exclusive for that matter, that he was not invited. And then we saw him, you know, as part of the people that were invited. Let me leave that update, guys, for you to comment uh, in the comment section what you think about this. And guys, I'm going to move on and give you the next update, which is the fact that there's a rumor right now that NFF, you know, are still considering bringing in uh you know someone else into the free as they try to get the best coach for nigerian survivors and the name that they've now listed is harvey reynard harvey reynard of course you know is a very popular uh, uh coach who coaches uh, the french uh, national women's team he is i would say a legend of uh, the african of the african uh football because he's uh, coached a couple of african nations he's, uh, been able to carry or lead two different countries to the African Cup of Nations uh, trophy, Zambia and then uh, Ivory Coast. But right now, any of them are interested in joining uh, uh, Harvey into the fray, you know, uh, for the possibility of seeing if they can actually employ him. But again, there's one uh, issue, issue of whether or not they're going to be able to pay him a salary. Of course, you know, one of the issues that made NFF to uh, have a breakdown in contract negotiation with Coach Busepusero was because of the demand, the huge salary demand. Busepusero actually demanded $120,000 and NFF were unable to pay that. And right now, Harvey is more expensive than Busepusero. Uh, the gist is to actually get him to leave the French women's uh, national team to come and coach in Nigerian Super Eagles is going to cost us $150 thousand dollars and i do not think for one the nff is going to be able to afford that so i wanted to add that to the video guys and you know hear your opinion do you think that we should go all out to get this man get the quality you know that he has that he possesses break the banks get the money wherever we need to get it and make sure that he is the next coach of nigerian spiders leaving the other guys i'm let you know and uh, the other one that concerns you know uh our prolific uh, striker in the French League, Terry Murphy. Of course, I've updated this in the community tab of the, of the channel uh, where I mentioned that he's now scored his 50th goal for uh, the French League. Uh, he actually completed that in this weekend's game where he scored one goal against Nantes. And of course, he's now, uh, you know, the third highest goal uh, Nigerian goal scorer of all time in the French League. The first, uh, the first person is John Otaka. 
you know, who occupies a position with 59 goals. We have a Victor Kleber, 55 goals. And then Terry Murphy comes to with 50 goals. Then we have Moses Simon, who's recovering from injury uh, right now. We wish him safe recovery. He is at 25 goals. We have Peter Odemwingi at 23 goals. So Sina also did great in the French league goal, but of course, you know, he spent only one year in uh, Lille and uh, just got a number of goals, I think 13 goals in like 27 appearances. Uh, but of course, uh, these are the five, you know, all time leading Nigerian goal scorers in French league goal. Leaving that let me end uh, with the last update that concerns a uh, gift Oman who uh, was completely outstanding uh, yesterday over. Uh, their match, Lyon actually played uh, against Valenciennes in their Cup de France uh, semi-finals and if Thoman was among uh, the goal scorers for that game, he didn't start the match of course uh, he's still trying to find his stride, you know, to be regular in the team but of course, when he was in, introduced uh, in, in the uh, second half of the game after Lacazette had already scored two goals uh, he actually substituted Lacazette and then he came in and scored the third goal to clinch the victory for Lyon and they will now be in the final of Cup de France uh, partly thanks to uh, uh, you know uh, Gift of Man for that one uh, you know it's just so good to actually see him getting a stride doing well you know with Lyon and of course we wish him all the best uh, from here on but that's the update guys for this video thank you for watching as always I appreciate you guys for joining to catch the video and I want to urge you to subscribe if, if you've not done so Take care of yourself today, guys, and uh, I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.